since 1982. Chrome Perfect's chromatography data systems have been synonymous with reliability and ease of use. Many customers have depended on Chrome Perfect for many decades. Their feedback and suggestions are invaluable to help us add features and improve Chrome Perfect with every new release. Anders Hoffer, associate professor at Umeå University in Sweden, has been using Chrome Perfect for over 20 years. He recently suggested improvements to our digital smoothing capabilities and provided valuable feedback to our software developers. Based on these discussions, Svitsi Golai smoothing algorithms are supported in Chrome Perfect version 8.2.4. In a conversation with Chrome Perfect sales manager, Jim Russell, Professor Hoffer describes his experiences with Chrome Perfect over the years. Good morning, Anders. Good morning. Thank you very much for spending the time today. Some of our kind of viewers of our YouTube channel may be interested in getting the thoughts of a longtime um, user of the Chrome Perfect system. And today I thought we'd have a quick chat about some of your experiences using the software, a little bit of the history that we have in our kind of working relationship together um, in terms of supporting you guys over the years, and just give our viewers just a quick understanding of your feelings of Chrome Perfect. Uh, yeah, I started around year 2000, I think it was. And uh, at that time I had a very homemade system, you could say some kind of voltage meter that only measured what came out and uh, I get the printout of everything and I needed to measure the peaks with the ruler. <laughs> it was very primitive at that time. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to have something better, I felt. And um, I looked at different prices and uh, many of the softwares were very high prices. So I took Chrome Perfect basically because I thought it was most price worthy. And for me, it was a bit fantastic to <laughs> go from that printer <laughs> to go to a real chromatography software. Well, it's, it um, sounds like uh, the switch to Chrome Perfect certainly saved you a lot of time in terms of having to uh, manually measure peak heights and cut things out. And... Yes, definitely. It was like heaven <laughs> to yeah, move yeah. to a real chromatography software. Um, so when you first, yes. when you first uh, started using Chrome Perfect, I presume you were using probably what Windows XP or probably maybe before that, Windows 95? Uh, yeah, that was before XP, actually. Yeah. It was Windows 95. And you're now using, I guess, Windows 10, is that right? Yeah, now I'm using Windows 10. Uh, yeah. And Chrome Perfect version 8. We've just recently um upgraded you to that that you know the newest the newest version, which is the, the Windows 10 version of Chrome Perfect. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that works fine. Great. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the setup of your lab in terms of um you know what instruments you use? Yeah, so I don't have a real HPLC system. It's more like I have a put together different parts. I bought pumps, a detector, a mixer, and I mean, assembled all these things. And then, sure. uh, yeah. And that is also a reason why I'm using Chrome Perfect, because if you buy a whole system, usually the software comes with it. But um, mm -hmm. I needed to have my own software that uh, I could connect, that could work with my system or with my components. Sure. And yeah. how about the users? Is 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 it for is Chrome Perfect used for teaching purposes, or is it is it research that you're doing there? Or I'm doing research. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we are. I have two since employed that works for me right now, and also I have some uh, exam students coming now and then that works with the system. What do you find useful in your day-to-day -day, um, use of the software? How, you know, what kind of things are you doing? Are you running multiple injections of the same sample and then comparing the two, or are you doing complex reporting, or what, how do you use the system? Uh, I'm mostly measuring uh, nucleotides from cells of different types, but also from uh, enzymatic assays. Okay. And, uh, yeah, analyze the results from them. So. Yeah, it's new research, basically, that oh. I'm 
for example, I test different uh, anti-cancer analogs on cells and I see what happens with the nucleotide levels. Yeah, this kind of analysis I do. Uh, we, it's, it's for medical use, yes. So we have mostly studied uh, parasite causes, which, which causes sleeping sickness uh, and um, worked on anti-cancer analogs works against these uh, parasite also. So that is uh, what we have done <laughs> mostly. Um, yeah. So, but we also uh, work on other pathogens. So this is not the only one. So we work on Borrelia also and GRG. Is there any area of Chrome Perfect? I know you said that uh, the budget was a very compelling reason to go with Chrome Perfect and you found it a very cost-effective um, system to purchase. Mm -hmm. But is there any yeah. of the features within the software that you find that our viewers would be particularly interested in uh, in terms of your, your use of Chrome Perfect? Yeah, we have we had this issue with um, the smoothing algorithm. Sure. Uh, so uh, there are many different types of smooth, smoothing algorithms within the software. Uh, but I felt that I would like to have this uh, Savitsky Golai smoothing, uh, which I have a good experience from when I have worked with mass spectrometry. And uh, I just asked you about it and uh, you could fix it for me. <laughs> so that was really nice. So you made an upgrade of the software where you implemented this Savitsky Golai smoothing. Sure. And you kindly pre uh, presented us with uh, a document showing, you know, showing the before and after and why you found it so so useful. And I'll share that on the screen now so the 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 viewers can can have a look at the different uh, before and after effects of the smoothing. So yeah, we as a company we only produce software. Our feature set is really developed by conversations with our users. So I think mm -hmm. that we have a very a very wide uh, range of uh, features within the software, and it's. Tends, it tends to be very organic. Um, so if we get re responses from customers like yourself that find any limitations in, the, in Chrome Perfect, we're very keen to investigate how we can address that. On, moving, moving ahead slightly, do you find you need to do a lot of manual integration of your peaks or does the Chrome Perfect algorithm kind of automatically uh, identify all the peaks and components in your chromatogram? Yeah, that was actually why I started looking at this smoothing, because uh, if you have a rugged baseline, uh, it has difficulty to find exactly the base of the peak. Sometimes it comes a bit up or down, depending on how the ruggedness look like. Sure. So, so that's the, the main reason why I wanted to have a good smoothing algorithm. And of course it worked with the previous ones also, but it was always a bit tricky to do the smoothing without losing the peak shape. Okay. Um, because if you make too much smoothing, your peaks become broader and you get less peak height and uh, less uh, separation between the peaks. And I think this uh, Savitsky Golai is the best algorithm I know in preserving the peak shape. And I'm really glad that it worked out, out for you because um, obviously what the ultimate, we, we always say to people, um, our users don't get paid to do chromatography. They get paid to get results, you know, to get numbers. So anything mm -hmm. that we can do so that you press a button and those numbers come out without any intervention, of course, is a, is a real, is a real benefit. And that's the, that's really the goal for any, um, for any lab, any chromatographer out there. If we can automate, as much of that process as possible. And I'm glad that our um, discussions about um, improving the smoothing has certainly helped in that regard for you, for you guys over there. Yeah, with this uh, smoothing, I made some tests this morning before this interview to, okay. to, to see. And um, if uh, I can get a much better effect, actually, if I uh, take out the data, uh, as uh, right now, I have optimized it. So uh, one volt, I convert to 100 
or one absorbent unit I convert to 100 millivolt as it is okay. now. And that is like the highest sensitivity I can get out of the UV detector. Sure. Mm. Um, and I've always used that because if I have, I get higher noise if I have another output. But the problem with the output I have now is that if the signal goes, can go over the roof. Yeah. So you get a flat. And it's it, flat. Like, like a flat line. So now in this morning, I tried to decrease the sensitivity to make it as low as possible. And I took out the data. And um, of course, I have a baseline, which is much more like this. Sure. Um, but after smoothing, it became nearly as good as if I took it out as the highest sensitivity. Uh, this is uh, a high frequency noise. Sure. So this smoothing is much more efficient if you have a high frequency noise than a low frequency noise. Of course, yeah. So uh, like this rather than like this, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. By by using the smoothing features of Chrome Perfect, effectively, it's given you more dynamic range because you've managed to get your signal, which was which was flat which was going outside of the, the range of Chrome Perfect and effectively bring it down so you have more ability to um, to show higher peaks. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Excellent. Uh, and uh, also the, the speed of the detector, that be before it was so important to have like uh, an uh, appropriate time constant. Sure. So, so with, with five seconds time point, uh, then I had uh, a good balance that the peaks were not so broadened. And at mm -hmm. the same time, it, the baseline was good enough. Okay. But, 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 but right now, it's, it's much less dependent on that. So I can take it out at the fastest rate and get almost as good data as with the five seconds rate. So. Yeah. So I think that is like the, the main advantage here that you are you don't need to optimize things so much. Sure. This algorithm optimizes it for you. So to Excellent. Say. Well, that's that's great to hear that that's uh, that's improved your analysis so much. Um, sampling rate is an interesting one because we often will get support requests from people who you know, want to deal with noise, and that, you know we discover that they're doing kind of HPLC in their sampling at. 40 points per second uh, oh, okay. what I understand yeah. is, you know that's one of the biggest things for introducing noise is the more times you sample that um that baseline the more you know the, the more noise is going to be introduced so for mm -hmm. a lot of our customers just reducing and and for a lot of hplc rods you know one point per second can be fine but of course it depends on how sharp your peaks are because if you have very sharp peaks you can you end up with a flat top because you don't get data points going right to the uh, right to the the highest point, you know. But 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 with this feature now, um, uh, the problem is less. Even if you have sample with the wrong time constant, it, it still works. So okay, Anders, uh, thank you very much for your time today, and thanks for being a loyal Chrome Perfect customer for all these years. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.